plating is a very high skill to building technique in Sprocket that is leading to some very extraordinary builds. And today I'm going to go and revisit the topic, um, as I have actually covered this one in a previous uh, video, as well as highlighting some absolutely insane plated builds. So right here is an uh, M48A1 by DZ123645. Um, he is an absolute master when it comes to rounded turrets in his designs. And of course, you can see right here, this m 4 a ones turret is looking very round, even though, of course, in Sprocket, that normally is not possible. So what these builders are doing is they're using a lot of very small plates and put them under the boat in such angles that it kind of simulates as if it is rounded, or uh, if it is certain details that you would otherwise not be able to achieve. And yeah, this one is, uh, as far as I'm aware, made with conventional plating methods, um, which I have covered in the previous video, but there's also a new method of doing stuff like this, which I'll be covering in this video. So stay tuned for that. So to talk about how people actually did this kind of plating, the what we call conventional plating, is a very, very intensive building technique. It takes a lot of time and effort and, uh, Basically, what you do is you put on a um, trench uh, uh, sled. So, for example, right here, I will be putting it on. And then you can put items on those trench sleds. And the thing is, is that you can curve them in kind of the way you want it to. But it also has these flat areas, basically, that you can very accurately build on. So, a common technique is to stack these uh, parts row after row to get them in such an angle that you can start plating on either this surface or on this surface depending on your either curved or flat needs. So that's the, the conventional method of doing this. Again, it is very, very intensive on uh, time, it takes a very, very amount of pre high amount of precision and uh, yeah, very few will be able to reach these kind of levels suddenly. But um, there is even like more insane levels of this, and to show that, I'm gonna try to load up here. There we go, the Leopard 2A4G, made by Turpin Jones, and uh, this is an absolutely insane build that is incorporating over 1,000 uh, parts, uh, coming in at around 1,100 parts for just plates on making the shape build. And this is one that's not even his most insane build, which I'll be showing off in a little bit. But it is still fully functional like any other build. Of course, the barrel is not quite meant to like elevate on this one because the mantle doesn't elevate with it, which makes it look kind of cursed. But that's all right because, you know, we can't select things to the barrel red. And as is a quick uh, poke at the developer, please, man. Can you make it so we can, uh, even just through file manipulation only, that we can attach items to the barrel? That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you. So, yeah, this build, he went absolutely overboard with this design. Uh, you can see all of this rear grilling, those are plates. The side armor right there, those are plates. These composite skirts, those are plates. The entirety of the bloody turret, those are plates. If I actually go and highlight the armor paneling, you can see there, you don't really even see the armor. And let me just poke the turret real quick. So this is actually where the turret ends. This is the front of the turret. It's completely flat. Then we got the roof right here, angled, and then here's the flat piece, and then it angles back away right here towards the middle, and that's still going to be the rear. Everything else here is plated. And yeah, it's absolutely insane. So, as far as I understand, this one is also made with trench uh, sleds, which boggles my mind even more. But what we're going to talk about is a bit more technical, but much less time intensive method of plating. So, right here, I have this very simple little structure in the top of my turret. It's just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six bars, including the light itself. And that's it, basically. It's gonna make uh, built to be a housing around the light. That that's all it's basically meant to be. And with just a few clicks, I was able to move from there 
to right here. And for that, you're going to have to find the blueprint file of your build. So generally, they will be in your documents, my games, pocket, factions, and then whichever faction you're working in, blueprints, vehicles, and there the right is, the blueprint files. So what I can do is so uh, edit it with Notepad++, which you can download for free by just Googling it. So uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, you've got this program, and you've got the save file right here. So scrolling down, at some point you will be finding these. So it opens up, it has a T, opens up again, bunch of numbers, then a ref with a kind of a weird string of uh, numbers and letters, then CID, DAT, and then it closes. So this here is actually something you can look at and look up on my own website here, uh, environmentis.nl slash sprocket slash file manipulation. And uh, right here, you will be able to find all of these strings uh, of letters and numbers on the right side. So for example, I want to edit specifically the headlights that I have. So what we'll do right here, I'll press Ctrl C or, uh, you know, just copy it. Then I go in here, I'll press Ctrl F to put up a search, paste it right into here and search the next one. Okay, so I found my light right here. So as I said, this is your light. And it's CID 1, which is meaning that it's attached to a turret. Which is in case if you have, let's say, have a build that is has headlights both on the hull and the turret. This is how you can identify whether you are uh, editing the one on the hull or whether the one on the turret. So you can see right here on the website, zero means hull, one equals turret. So I found the, the light that I want to add it. So I'm going to just put this to the side real quick. So let's say I want this light a little bit towards the middle. So I'll be editing this number right here. So it's 0, 0 0.3. Let's make it 0 0.25 instead. So if I reload the blueprint now, You'll see it has moved a little bit over to the middle. Because those other, tr the, uh, from the, the big list of numbers, generally the only tree you want to touch are the top tree, uh, which are going to be left right position, up down position, and forward and backwards position. Where left is negative, right is positive, up is positive, down is negative, then forward is positive, and back is negative for these three numbers. And there, it's a bit of a weird system. Basically, if you got your turret, the most forward position it can be on. So it would be, um, if I go back to the uh, turret editor right here, would be the most forward position because the, the turret is slightly angled backwards like this, ever so slightly. Okay, now it's not. So now it's a perfectly flat front face. So if it has to be touching this front face, the position would be one. It will be right on this edge forward and uh, this would be uh, minus one and zero would be perfectly flat in the middle of your turret. So that means that if you make your turret longer or shorter it will offset further. Of course because I am only touching the rear right now instead of the front this will not shift but if I um, start shifting the other parts uh, they will like shift differently as you can see right here. Uh, again it depends on where exactly it's counted and we're s I'm still kind of figuring out how exactly these numbers work. So it is very important once you start editing this, um, you have to make sure that your turret shape is final. Before you start doing these number thingies, make sure your turret shape is what you want to be and you're not going to change it and you're going to put things on the turret like that. So the next three numbers in the little file out here, these four, are rotational numbers. They're quaternions. If you're a person that actually understands quaternions, you can use these to rotate the plates freely. Sadly, I am not one of those persons. I have fell around with them a little bit, but for me they're a little bit too complex of a number. So instead, I highly suggest that you first put an item at the place where you roughly want it to be, and then put the second item like at the rotation where you want it to be. For example, this plate right here in the back. I initially placed down on the back of the turret like this, so I knew it was facing the right orientation, and then I just file manipulated over to that section of the uh, turret. Pretty straightforward way of going about that. So you can have one that's referencing the positions and one for referencing the rotation, so you can simply copy paste these four numbers in the other row. So for example, right here you can see another instance of those four numbers. Uh, actually, these, are these ones. And you can see how confusing these are. 2 to the power of E minus uh, uh, 8. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not following along with those numbers. Um, but yeah, th those are what those do. And then you have two more numbers. One is skill, right there. So if I, for example, uh, take one of these and put the skill number right here to zero, which actually, it, ha it, it does clamp it automatically to the minimum amount of skill. You, uh, you can actually see that the light went up slowly tiny. And similarly, if I put it to like 10, and I will load it, we got a very big light. So that, that's a pretty straightforward one that is actually very easy to understand. So again, I'll just put it back to one and have it right there. But let's say I want to have this light be a bit bigger, actually. Let's make this a good example. We're going to put this one back to minus three. Then our up down is, is currently 0 0.6 and a lot of small numbers, but let's make it 0 0.55 and make the scale, let's say five. So what we'll do is, okay, it's a, it's a bit too big now. Uh, let's put it to 0.3 and put this to like 45 to make it go further down. And you can just sync things right into the uh, turret this way. So there you can already see kind of what I'm going for. Uh, maybe even make this a smaller number. That would be too far. So I kind of have to fiddle around with these numbers real quick. So here you can see, actually, this is a pretty decent uh, outcome. Where... Uh, the light itself is going to be embedded into the hole, so that's not going to do too much of a thing for me right now. You see, but the light itself is kind of fitting the housing pretty well, even though it's not completely filling it, and there are some of the holes in the corners. It is passable, in my opinion, so you can see how the, the thing itself is embedded into the um, lower area of the, the hull, uh, the turret. And very similar, you would also be able to like mount a machine gun directly out of the mantlet, which is exactly what the um, M48 uh, A1 creator did. Again, yeah, you can see the machine gun right there, and it's actually just clipping straight through the interior. I can I uh, grab it real quick? Oh. And this is where it's almost impossible generally to grab something. Like, I'll be reloading the blueprints in a second, but there we go. Okay, that was actually a uh, bomb on a machine gun turret that they managed to completely hide. I thought it was actually going to be one of the 50 cals, but apparently I was wrong there. So, of course, that that's a very good example of why um, you still want to be creative with building. Like, if you can hide a just sort of some normal machine gun in there, just go do it. You know, like, nobody will be stopping you. And that might end up, end you up uh, saving you a lot more work and trouble than it was worth when doing it with the other kind of machine gun. But that said, I do actually have one more extremely insane uh, build to show you guys. Again, by Terman Jones. This is the Leopard 2 PL, and it's actually... There we go. Uh, struggling a little bit. I'm noticing noticeable frame drops when looking at this build. Because this build doesn't only have 1100 parts like the Leopard 2, it's expanding upon it and it goes up and beyond and adds another 1020 parts for a total of 2120 parts. This will not run on very low end devices. I'll give you a warning ahead of time, if you guys got a low end device, you probably will not be able to play with this thing. Because it is simply that dense in terms of parts and it will give you a very large CPU strain. So that's the big draw side of um, getting builds as complicated as these and why uh, a lot of players actually are kind of waiting for the round turret update. So they can make rounded turrets without having to commit to the atrociously high amount of parts. Because no matter how cool this build is, it will never be added to the base game. Um, because, again, performance reasons. While some of the other builds might actually have a chance to make it in the build's uh, ba uh, base game, uh, the ones contributed to the Sparkle Community uh, Replica project, will actually be sent over to Hamish Dunn, the developer of the game, and he will be considering them if they're uh, under at least 60 parts, um, and not above that. So this thing is really 
way beyond that, like 30 times above the supposed limit. Yeah. That is uh, just how careful uh, the developers think about optimization with this game. But yeah, you might actually notice that this is actually still the, pan the, the, the Leopard 4, as you can see right here, the body. But it has the large amount of armor package on the turret added onto it. Uh, big rear um, storage bin. Uh, extra add-on armors on the sides, pretty sure. No, no, no. That's, that actually, never mind. That's the same. It's kind of hard to compare these real quick. And one thing you guys might want to notice is the fact that these, I'm pretty sure, didn't are uh, at least the, the edge here is also custom made yeah there we go those are custom made radiators right there as well it really is one of the most insane builds that i've uh, ever witnessed in the game and uh if you actually want to try this one out for yourself you can join the community replica project and it's going to be it is uh, one of the submissions in the modern era pack as the submissions are now open to public, everybody can download submissions uh, instead of like the entire pack. So it's also a very good sharing ground of realistic made tanks and sprocket. And well, nobody's actually expecting people to make builds like these. They're still apparently coming to the replica pack and I'm very excited with that. But even if you want to submit, you really don't have to go in as insane as uh, some of these builders. Uh, there's definitely like builds that you can make without going this much in depth in plates and still be very accurate. And yeah, that's pretty much it what I got for today. Again, you can check out my website for all of the uh, references to all the different parts and how to f use the file manipulation to move those. And if you want to just try it out, again, just download Notepad++. It's a free program that you can just use out of the box. And it will do a whole lot of good for you when uh, file editing. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Um, I don't think I'll be putting this one in a, uh, like in a battle for now. Because that would be quite straining to load in and not sure if the AI can handle a build with this part kind because they do bug out uh, on uh, AI sometimes if there's too many plates. So there's that. I'll just uh, enjoy driving right around for now. And with that, I hope you guys all had a wonderful day and I'll see you guys all in the next one.